I'm gonna showcase a new KMP library that I have recently published. For those of you who are not familiar, sprite animation is a type of a 2D animation where a sequence of images, often called frames, are displayed in a fast sequence to create an illusion of the movement. So each frame shows a slightly different position or the state of the character or an object, and by quickly switching the frames, we are creating the animation effect. These uh, frames are uh, typically arranged in a grid format within a single image known as the sprite sheet. So, sprite sheet animations are uh, often used to animate uh, characters in uh, video games, but also UI components like uh, icons, buttons and more. I've been working on this library in the past uh, week and uh, so far there are two functions that you can use. Sprite view, which you can place in the scope of the composable function, and the second one, a draw sprite view, that you can directly use within the draw scope of the canvas. There is one useful parameter called sprite flip that you can use to change the orientation of the sprite animation and flip it vertically or horizontally. This library also allows you to set the different sprite sheet dimensions based on the current screen size. Which means, your animation will look perfectly optimized on a regular, small and large smartphones, as well as tablets. Now we come to the question, uh, how can we create a sprite sheet animation? Well, if you are a graphic designer, then you can do it by yourself. But even if you are not proficient in that area, there are a ton of websites that allows you to download sprite sheet animations for free. Like for example, GameArt2D.com, CraftPix.net and more. I'm now quickly gonna show you how to create a sprite sheet from image frames that you have already obtained. I have already downloaded this little ninja and here we have throwing knife frames. So, if you don't want to create multiple sprite sheets to support different screen sizes, then you can use a single dimension. It's totally okay. We are currently in Figma, right? So, for the demonstration purpose, I will create the new frame using the frame tool. For now, I will add a custom width and height. But later, we will adapt it according to our frame dimensions. To make things simpler, we can grab those same frames that we already have and just copy and paste them. It's usually a good idea to wrap those images inside the frame by using the shortcut Shift plus A. That way, you can easily control the spacing between images and make sure that it's consistent. You need to have a zero spacing between your frames, because that's how your animation will look perfect. After we add the fourth, fifth and the sixth image, we can again wrap them inside the frame, and do the same thing for the last three of them. Great! Next, we can select all three frames with nine images in total, and again click the shortcut Shift plus A to create the new frame. This time, there should be a vertical spacing between those three frames. Here as well, be sure to have a zero spacing between those three frames. It is important for making your animation as smooth as possible. Lastly, you can select this parent frame that contains those three or four nested frames, then apply an auto layout feature, and set the hug content for the width and height of this frame. With this, we can make sure that there is no any extra spacing around the frames either. Don't forget to remove the fill color before exporting this whole image as a PNG file. And there you go, you have successfully created your first sprite sheet. Let me show you how to implement this sprite sheet in your Kotlin multi-platform project. So first, make sure to add the sprite view dependency inside the common main source set. Then, copy that uh, sprite sheet that we have just exported into your Compose resource directory. Don't forget to rebuild the project after that, so that the compiler can recognize this new resource file. Also, if you have uh, different sheets for uh, various screen sizes, add them here as well. I will quickly add the column in our app Composable, and then on the center of the screen we can call Sprite View Composable. Here we can pass uh, two parameters. So let's create and remember a sprite state first. To this new state we need to provide the two required parameters. The total number of frames in our sprite sheet, as well as the number of rows. The speed of the animation is set to be 50 milliseconds by default. 
but you can customize that value at your convenience. The second parameter in our sprite view is uh, called sprite spec. So this is the place where we need to provide the actual resource file of the sprite sheet. We can optionally pass a sprite sheet for each screen size category, or we can pass only a default one. For now, let's use only one dimension. Besides the resource file, we also need to specify the width and height of the frame in this sheet. So each frame inside the sheet should have the same size. Just go back to Figma, and copy and paste those width and height values of the frame. Lastly, we need to pass the screen width so that we can properly calculate which sprite sheet to display. Luckily, I have added one extra function to help us obtain that information. Let's launch the application to see how it looks. You will notice that the animation is not triggering, because we do need to explicitly call start function to control when to start this animation. For the demonstration, I will call a disposable effect, which will trigger that function as soon as we open up the application. Don't forget to call cleanup function to cancel the underlying coroutine scope when we leave the composition. Plus, there is one more stop function that we can use to control the behavior of the animation. If we launch the application once again, uh, then the animation will start. Voila! Now, I'm gonna quickly specify a couple of more sprite sheets for a different screen dimensions and uh, launch uh, two more emulators to show you how we can adapt a different uh, sheet size to optimize the UI on a multiple devices. There we go. Everything works as expected. So, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment down below. If you encounter any issues while using this library, don't forget to open up an issue on this uh, GitHub repository. And of course, don't forget to leave a like to this video, but only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.